On today's episode of End Stops and Explanations, Part 4, we are talking about optical sensors. Aren't we, Sophie? Get off my board. Get down from there! All right, so why am I making such a big fuss about this? Well, it's important to understand the switching transistor concept. And when you do that, then that opens up a whole other world of availability and possibilities to you if you are a rep strapper like me and just designing and building stuff. Because I literally, I, I don't even care what kind of sensor I have because I understand how to use it. And I've got all kinds of sensors that I have pulled off of equipment, some out of copiers, some of them out of industrial equipment, um, lots and lots of different types of sensors here that, that all have some type of a transistor output. And once you understand how that works, you can use any of them in any of the ways that you want to. Now, if I look at uh, some different schematics that I've got pulled up here, and I'll, I'll go through these more in detail too, but this is the one we were just looking at. Has a transistor open collector output. Here's another one, a different style of sensor. And once again, I've got my positive in, I've got my negative, and my output goes to an open collector transistor. There's my load. All right, here's another one. It's photo optical sensor. Uh, and I'll explain all this, but it's basically a transistor that's uh, being activated by light. Whether you break that beam of light or whether the light is allowed to hit the transistor determines whether it's on or off. But that transistor is acting like a switch. This transistor is acting like a switch. It's open or closed. This transistor is acting like a switch. I can keep going here. I've got multiple different ones. This one's a little bit different, and I'll go into why that one's different as well. But here it is. So it says open collector right there. There's the collector of my transistor that goes to my output. And you can use that just like I used the circuit that I built on the table here. So that that concept is important to get. And again, if something doesn't make sense, go ahead and say something in the comments and I'll be glad to, to follow up and make a different video as well because I'll, this is another one of those core concepts that uh, are important to get before you move forward. So let's get into some actual meat here and let's actually connect something. What I have here is a sensor. It's a slotted optical sensor that uh, has an infrared beam of light that comes out of one side and is detected by the other side. Let me draw that out. It would probably be a better idea. So I'm going to draw this from the side. All right, so this side has a light emitting diode in it that emits light from one side, and this side has a transistor in it that is turned on by that light. Now I know the last time, in the last video, I talked about how your transistor has a lead on it here that has to get a signal to turn that transistor on. Well, these are uh, photonic, they're, they're activated by light. I can't think of the right word. But this beam of light will turn on that transistor. So when the beam of light, or we'll call that the emitter because it emits light, when that beam of light is striking that transistor, it is acting like a closed switch, just like before. That that switch is closed and com completing my circuit. If that beam of light is off or blocked somehow, that transistor is now off and the switch is open. So again, you treat this just like an open or closed switch and you don't have to worry about biasing and all the other things, you know, well, at least not on most sensors. I'll get into that later too. But all you have to think about is this transistor being on or off, open or closed. Okay, so if I were to draw out this particular sensor, I looked all over for this sensor. This is something, some Japanese sensor. I couldn't find any information on it at all, but because I'm familiar with sensors, I putzed around with it and figured out how it actually works. So I have five volts 
coming into that and I have, uh, you know what, let me draw it differently. I'm just doing this on the fly guys. I'm not very good at planning. So I've got three wires here. I've got a red and a black and a blue. And by trial and error and destroying one of them accidentally, I determined that the red is my positive and it is five volts. My black is my ground and my blue is my signal. Okay, that conveniently lines up with my ramps board over here where I have plus, minus, and signal. What do you know? So, uh, real quick, we talked about using a switch to connect my signal and my minus all the time, but there's this plus rail. If I go over and look at my ramps uh, pin diagram here, so, when you look at this, you can see that you know pin three VCC means your supply voltage uh, that's coming in. It's five volts, and pin three is connected to all of these uh, connectors here on pin three to five volts. And ground over here is also connected to pin two. They call that five volts a convenience voltage. It's there uh, to help you out if you need it to make it easier to connect things, but you won't always use it. In this case, we're actually going to use it. You know, pin one is my actual signal input here. So let's go back to my actual uh, circuit here. And if I were to connect this sensor right here, this connector, and I, I pinned it this way on purpose, I can connect this directly to my header over here. My five volts, my ground, and my signal, they all line up correctly. Now they might not on every sensor, so you have to be aware of what voltages uh, are on what pins on these types of sensors, and I'll do my best to explain that. You know, when I look at this one as it's coming out of the uh, sensor here, whoops, sorry, it's red, blue, and black, but I've drawn it out, I've pinned it on this side as red, black, and blue. Nope. Red, black, and blue because that's how I want the pins to be arranged when I plug it into the header on the ramps board. So uh, I've got one of those DuPont kits where I can put ends on anything I want and repin it. Super handy, highly recommended. So red is power, black is ground, blue is my signal. And on this end of the wire, red is black, or red is power, black is ground, blue is signal. So get back in focus here. I'm going to connect this directly to, and make sure I get my polarity right, get my positive. If you flip this around like this, you're putting positive on your signal, and you're putting uh, uh, your signal on your positive. And I've actually burned things out before. I've burned out more than one uh, voltage regulator on an Arduino before, because I wasn't paying attention. So make sure you pay attention. Not my fault if you mess it up. There's my disclaimer. So I'm going to plug this in to my X minimum right now. And let me make sure that I'm uh, looking at, there we go. So I'm looking at my X min right here and it says it's open. All right, so electrically, and because I've got this inverted, remember I said in, make sure this is up here, my X, min it says it's open all right my x minimum end stop is false and the reason it says false is because this is right now because of um, what we talked about my beam of light between my emitter and my receiver is turning on my transistor So I have, if I draw this schematic like this, there's my ground. All right, and there's another pin.
like that. You know what? Let me just put a box around these two to talk about the two different halves of that slotted sensor. Right now, this transistor is on. It is the equivalent of a closed switch. Like that. So if that's a closed switch, it's normally closed right now. And in my Arduino firmware, it's expecting a closed switch. My inverting is still set to false. That's by default, it expects there to be a closed switch. So when I look at my my end stop, my X min, it says it's open. Okay. When I break that beam, I'm just going to use a screwdriver here and drop it in there. It says that it's triggered. Okay. That's because that screwdriver blocked that beam of light. That switch is now open. All right. And that's again by the default configuration on a in the Marlin firmware. I've it triggered my end stop. I'm now my end stop or my carriage of my axis has now reached the uh, end of its its travel. It's been triggered. All right. Did that too fast. There we go. So the screwdriver is acting as a flag. That is the correct technical term for this. I've got, it's the exact same sensor here, but it has an actual flag uh, built into it. It's a, a little button and a little metal rod that interrupts that beam of light. So if I take this guy off, get him out of the way. Too many details. There we go. So right now, my X min end stop is open. When I push that flag into the sensor, it says that it's triggered. All right. Your flag might be just a little piece of metal that's attached to the carriage that blocks that beam. It doesn't matter, but it's called a flag. So when you hear me talk about a flag, that's what I'm talking about. All right. So that's an actual example of a sensor that I pulled out of a piece of equipment and I gave the um, gave it power and a ground and I took that signal. Oh, that's the other thing I just need to make sure I mention because it's part of, of this is that if I go and look at my Marlin firmware, I have my end stop pull up defined. All right, because this is an open collector. This is one pin. There's my transistor, and there's another pin. That's actually my ground, and then my blue wire right there, okay? So I have to have on my ramps board, that's my signal, and my minus and my plus, I have to have internally that pull-up resistor to pull this up to 5 volts right here. Otherwise, that transistor opening and closing isn't going to change anything. Nothing's going to happen here. We talked about that in a previous video. So just so that I'm perfectly clear on that, when you're using this type of open collector output, you do have to have your pull-up resistor enabled in the firmware, just like as if you were using an actual switch. That's one example of an optical switch that you could use as an end stop. I've got more, so stick around. Hopefully this is interesting. Let me know if it's not. Let me know if it is. Let me know if you had a question or if there's something else I can discuss. I'd be glad to do that. Thanks much.